Hey, this is Carl, and I want to talk about a kind of an interesting problem. Let's just say that you got something that's intended to be for 230 volts European power, and you want to plug it in in the U.S. Well, you know, you know, you can always put an adapter on it, but then it gets kind of clunky. So I want to go ahead and do something they recommend that you don't do, which is to take this apart, even though it has no user serviceable components. Hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. But let's first talk about how do you go about converting something from 230 volts AC to 5 volts DC safely? What I want to do, basically, my project here, since I know I can just physically put 120 volts in here and it's going to be fine. The label tells me that this will take up to 230 volts or down to 110 and it'll convert 50 or 60 hertz to the DC. So there's absolutely no danger in putting 120 volts instead of 230. So I just don't want to have this plug, which isn't really an adapter, it's just a plug. I want to put a US plug on this and make it work. So let's see what's going on here. First, let me give you the quick introduction to what you have to do to convert the 230 into 5 volts DC. Ready? Okay, so let's take a look at what we know that we need to do to convert the 230 AC to the 5 volts DC, and it'll help us understand what we think we're going to find when we open up this case. So right here, we start with 230 volts AC that we bring in. Remember AC, one wire is sometimes positive and sometimes negative. So it pulses back and forth, alternating the current. The first thing we need to do is reduce that current. So we have what's called a transformer. So this is a circuit design that basically, <laughs> it actually kind of looks like what's going on. Inside the transformer, you have one set of wires that's on this side, and you actually have some bars of iron in the middle, and then you have wires on the other side, and the induction causes the electricity to throw, flow through those wires, but at a smaller rate. So it's going to be roughly about 18 volts. That's the norm when we're stepping down. So the input could be 120, or it could be 230 in either case, it's going to step down to about 18 volts coming out of this circuit, okay? So that's step number one, is to use a transformer to lower the voltage. This is a drawing of diodes. So a diode simply is a component that only lets electricity flow in one direction. So what happens is sometimes the electricity is flowing here and sometimes it's flowing there. Remember, alternating current. So a diode is only going to let electricity flow in one direction. And in this case, what happens is this is the plus side and that's the negative. So the electricity wants to flow in that direction and then it goes to this wire and out that way. And it wants to flow in that direction. But when the positive is coming in here, it can't flow this way. So it has to flow this way and then this way. The result is when electricity is coming in this direction, it puts it out to this lead. And when it's coming in this direction, it puts it out to this lead. And that way, electricity can only go out to those two leads in one direction. And it basically, what was alternating current becomes direct current. Now, it's what they call a pulsating direct current because you've got this thing going on and it's kind of like, you know, fits and starts, but that's okay. So we've now got 18 volts pulsating direct current. So when we move to the green wires, it's going to be direct current wires. Cool. So we've reduced the voltage and then we have set it so that it goes from AC to DC. Okay, step number three, we're going to use 
this basically it's a regulator that smooths out the current. So what this component is here is a capacitor that it has polarity, okay? And what all that means is that it only lets electricity go from one direction to the other. So it's got, it's like a diode, except what a capacitor does is it stores a charge until it reaches a certain point and then it releases it, okay? So what that does for the pulsating DC is that when the pulse goes up, it gathers some of that charge if it exceeds the voltage we want. And then when the pulse goes down below what it should be, then it releases that pulse. So it sort of takes that ziggy zaggy direct current and turns it into something that's a little smoother. And that's just basically, that's all that capacitor does. So then the final piece of the circuit is what's called a voltage regulator. You've heard that term. And again, there's two capacitors that are not polarized. And then you have this integrated circuit. Now we could do this with other circuitry, but we'll see when we get in there. But most likely what I'm expecting to find is an integrated circuit. And when you look at the IC, there's four digits. The first two talk about the components that are used inside. The last two digits are the voltage that's coming out. So whatever we find in there, we expect it to end with a 05. So it'll be IC whatever, 7805. And that will tell us that what comes out is five volts with a plus and a minus. So five volts direct current and it's a very simple circuit, uh, which actually fits into that tiny little plastic module. So now let's open it up and see if we're right about what we expect to find. I know that some people get freaked out about electricity, but you just have to believe me. This is not plugged in at any at either end. Here, worst case scenario, it would be five volts. Here is electricity that only goes in. It doesn't come back out. Uh, you know, you can lick it, you can do whatever you want. So I, I just want to assure you that when you have this kind of a thing, uh, it is safe to go ahead and open it up. Now, you can screw stuff up, don't get me wrong. You might not want to plug it back in without taking some serious safety precautions, but you know, that's part of how you learn about electricity is you learn to take those safety precautions. Remember, one of the great, absolutely unbreakable rules of life is to slow down and get more done. This is a perfect example of that. Go slow, be careful, document what you're doing and everything's gonna be just fine. Now, uh, as you can see, if you look super, super close, this has got kind of a seal line on that case. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to just pop it open. It may be unhappy about being popped open, but I think we can get the job done. Well, that was surprisingly easy. Okay, so when we look on the inside, we see that we have 230 volts coming in here, and that's those two big red wires. The bottom side is just circuitry uh, that leads the electricity hither and yon. So what we see is it comes in here. So what you see on the inside, this is that transformer we talked about with the winding of wires that allows it to step down the voltage. And there's some extra circuitry. So we already know that we put an adapter on here, put in 110 volts, it converted it properly, everything works exactly the way it's supposed to be. So really all we have to do is replace this piece of plastic with the 230 input into 120 volts and we're good to go. So there's a lot of ways that we could do this. We could 
take a container, <laughs> drill a hole in the side for the wire, stick our electrical wire inside of there and have it look like that. That'd be kind of fun. But since we have a good case that actually does 98% of what we do, needed to do, I think we're just gonna try to reuse this. So we start by snipping off these leads. And then I think we're just gonna ignore this and put a hole in it like this. And these wires fit just nicely inside there. And once I clean the soldering iron, I'll solder those together and we'll be good to go. Okay, it's plugged into the wall. Now we put this in here. And it comes on. And it's beautiful. And it works. Yay! So the bottom line is, it's super easy. You just have to go slow, take your time and be very, very careful. Hey, if you learned anything here or found this at remotely useful, give me a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel. For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Palchuk wishing you the best of luck in everything you do.